Um, welcome to the Changing the Tires While Driving session, Transforming Schneider Electric's Fire Experience by Combining Digital Transformation with Air-Free Execution. Hey, welcome. My name is James Soto. I'm the founder and CEO of Industrial. We are so happy to be here and supporting B2B Marketing's event. Excellence is actually in the execution. So whether it be spelled with an I or a Y, you'll see it here from our friends in the UK. I think we're going to have a great session. So please help me in welcoming Catalina, Catalina Dobe. Uh, she's Director of Global Production and the um, European and Middle East and African Markets Client Services. Kalia Molinar, Digital Senior Strategist, and Fred Ewald, CEO of Market One. Come join us. Welcome and take it away. Appreciate that. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's great to be in Chicago, uh, my hometown. I was born here uh, only till about five years old. Then uh, I moved to Boston, where I'm still located. Uh, Market One, I'll, I'll speak a little bit about it, but this isn't really about Market One so much as it is about uh, the use case of Schneider Electric and uh, how we help Schneider transform themselves to create a, um, an, an optimized system of digital production uh, using marketing automation uh, at scale in an environment that is error free. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, advance my slides. Uh, this isn't my laptop, so bear with me if I start stumbling through one or two. Uh, sponsor slide. Uh, so as James nicely introduced herself, himself uh, and, our, and us, we've got Catalina, we have Kalia and myself. Uh, Catalina is in London currently, and uh, Kalia is in France. They couldn't make the trip in, in person, but uh, hopefully we can pull this off, kind of a, a, a multimedia was with, with help from Zoom, and see if we can't uh, make this useful for the group here today. So uh, as our main slide, uh, I, I like the, the photograph here. This really is all about how do you transform uh, a company um, when you still have assets to get out the door, you still have demand gen programs you're running, but you're trying to change people, process, and technology at the same time. And uh, so, as I mentioned, this is about Schneider Electrics, their buyer experience, and how to uh, combine digital transformation with error free global execution at scale. So a quick slide just to orient ourselves, uh, you know, as Gartner Group mentions today, 80%, 81% of customers believe that they will be competing uh, based on customer experience and not their product exclusively. And the challenge that Schneider Electric had uh, was really linking the journey. And this is all about trying to tear down silos and silos could be in people, it could be process, it could be technology. Um, so some of the challenges that Schneider was facing before we uh, joined forces with them was that they had marketing automation in place, like most uh, enterprise class companies have these days, uh, but not being optimized. It's not being used to its full potential. Uh, digital communications continuing ongoing, but, but, uh, but a bit disjointed and filled with errors. Uh, sales and marketing tripping over each other, uh, a, a message which was not aligned and various agencies and silos need for consolidation. And the one thing I will note about here is that this isn't necessarily only a use case about companies that use outside agencies. This could be teams that are internal, but they're not working together and it's all about alignment. Um, so that result was a disjointed buyer customer experience. And so how do you keep the, the car driving uh, or the plane flying while the engine's being rebuilt or the tires being changed? Uh, so for us, it's all about strategy and execution. And you can't have transformation without both interlocked and working together. Uh, right channel, message, right person, right time. How do you build? How do you prioritize? How do you govern? How do you track and optimize? So here I'm going to step back. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Kalia, and she's going to bring you through a few slides on the strategy side of how we help Schneider. So Kalia, if you wouldn't mind... Um, Un unmuting and we'll make sure we can hear you okay. We can see you on screen and I will turn it over to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Fred. Um, appreciate that. Um, bear in mind, we can't see the slides ourselves on the Zoom. Um, so I'll just uh, ask you to advance the slide uh, when I'm ready to go. 
All right. So um, everything, you know, starts with step one, which is you need to understand what's happening inside your customer database, right? So customer segmentation is what you would want to do first to be able to really understand more about who do you have in your database? Um, what are the insights that you can get to understand where people are in their buying journey and what is where they are in their relationship with you as a company? Um, it's also designed to make sure that you there's nobody in your database left untouched and ultimately drives better engagement as you tailor your communication to the different stages in the buyer buying cycle. So because the customer behavior has changed so much in the last couple of years, uh, they're really expecting you to drive a more personalized and relevant messaging towards them. So you need to really be able to understand all the digital touch points and make sure that there's interconnection between how sales and marketing are talking to, to your customers um, and make that more dynamic and orchestrated. So segmentation is a good start for that, right? And technically you can use any data that you have available in your CRM or in your marketing automation system to inform yourselves on who's a prospect, for example, versus a buying customer, who is active, actively engaging uh, with your company, who is not actively engaging anymore, what are the sales stages that they're in, are they on an opportunity, and so on. As a result, by segmenting based on all those data points that you have that give you those insights, you're able to also better measure how people are moving um, through the funnel as they, as they are building up their relationship with you as a company. So if we move to the next slide, um, I want to show you what Schneider Electric's challenge was and how we helped overcome um, by implementing this segmentation uh, approach. So they had Schneider Electric had a very limited understanding of where their uh, customers were in their in the buying journey. Um, so because of that lack of understanding, um, they were not really able to target and automate. Um, the communication that they were sending out. So the engagement programs that they had uh, were not working well um, and every, because of everybody being treated in the same way. So now, you know, going in and analyzing the, the database and all the information that we have around the contacts, we were able to break down the database into core buckets based on how active these people were. Are they new to us uh, or have they been with us for a, a while? Um, and so we were, we built this what we call customer engagement lifecycle model, um, where we've grouped kind of these uh, buckets of within the database um, to really have a distinct view of um, of what's happening inside your customer base. Um, the the other thing that's really important here, it gave a lot of visibility to the marketing teams to understand who are new contacts coming in through sales versus new contacts coming in via marketing activities. Um, what does the database health look like? Um, in this case, you know, the fish is kind of, the more to the middle you are, the better the health of the database is, the more to the right, the, the worse it gets. Understanding churn in your database, is, it was really um, giving people a lot of better visibility into what was happening with their database. So if we then move to the next slide, um, if you've done the segmentation and you've implemented that model based on whatever data you have available um, to allow you to give those insights that you need to understand the requirements for your communication strategy against each of those segments that you just defined. So designing and executing the right type of programs, the right type of messaging for each of, the, for each of these um, buckets, the right type of content uh, that really aligns to, to each of the stages in the buying cycle will ensure that you can drive a, a more relevant and, and timely message towards your customers and prospects. Um, and here are some examples of how some of these programs would be tied to each of the segments that, that we have put here as an example in this model. So for example, you would have a welcome program for net new contacts that come into your base, a nurture program for, for people that have expressed an interest in your solutions, you can do pipeline acceleration for contacts, customers that are on an opportunity with you already, uh, a retention or loyalty program for existing buying customers, and a reactivation program, for example, for those that become dormant uh, along the way. And through the use of automation, marketing automation, you can create all of these programs once, and they will be on 
over a longer time period because they're always on and they would constantly trigger people into these programs whenever they meet the criteria that you set for all of these. Um, so it's a very efficient way of um, uh, building these programs once and keeping them on for a longer time period of time. So if we then move to the next slide and look at uh, how we how we implemented that for Schneider Electric. So based on the life cycle, life cycle engagement model that we built, the segmentation model that they use, we could now put together specific communication strategy and messaging uh, in, inside programs that were aimed at each of these segments um, that they uh, defined. And this is what we call the communication blueprint. Uh, which is what you see here on this slide. And each of the programs is then a blueprint brick, if you will. And these are the always on programs that they just um, create once and then they will always be on and you can just evolve them over time. This way of visualizing this in the blueprint was really important for the marketing teams because now they could really see how all the programs fit together, how people flow through based on where they are um, and how they all interconnect with each other. Um, so they, in their case, they created uh, one blueprint for each of the customer types that they have and the partner types that they have to make it even more relevant for each specific end type of end user. Um, and, and that was really a, a very a powerful way of making very tailored communication strategy for each of their um, end user and partner types. The result um, for Schneider Electric was that they were doing a lot of ad hoc programs before this model was launched, which is very time intense and resource intense. Um, and we were able to bring down the ad hoc programs um, in benefit of the always on programs with 60%, which is massive. Um, and the engagement rates went up significantly as well, just in the first couple of months when we launched this in, in the initial um, couple of markets where we did pilots with this blueprints. So if we then move to the next slide, um, of course, every organization is organized in a different way. So you can be very centralized uh, from a marketing perspective, um, where the global teams kind of <clears throat> have a lot of um, mandates to create these programs and to launch it uh, in markets across the globe. You can be very regionally focused, so it's kind of halfway house, or you can be very decentralized, uh, where the country teams are kind of doing things on their own. So in in the case of Schneider Electric, they are a highly decentralized organization. They even call themselves the most local of global companies. And that makes it a bit more complicated um, when you want to deploy such a model at scale, right? So how do you do that then? In the case of Schneider Electric, all of these blueprints and the programs inside the blueprints are created at a global level. So the global teams would be building those programs because they're responsible for the content for, for each of the customer types and so on. Um, so how do you ensure that the countries are then enabled to execute on that? So in the case of Schneider Electric, they have a very formal process um, uh, to hand over to do kind of a handshake with the country teams who then buy into adopting those blueprints. Um, and then the actual deployment is now kind of evolving in a new operating model where we're looking at either the countries can be part of a centrally deployed model where the, the global teams would just do the, apply the blueprints and deploy them for countries who are opting in to those and then take away all the burden of making sure that that execution gets done or the countries can just opt in and do the, the deployment themselves in, in country. But in any case, it is super important that, you know, when you have these kind of new ways of working and new models um, that you really over communicate to your key stakeholders internally. Um, in this case, Schneider Electric created a lot of documentation. Uh, so to make sure that everybody knows what, what blueprints are available, what programs are available for countries to, to launch and, and deploy. Um, and also, um, uh, you know, they create a lot of things like kits where, where all, the, all the details are available. Um, so I think that's a really critical element as well for success. So first of all, build that model and then make sure that it gets deployed. And I think I'm handing it back to Fred now. Right. So um, 
that, that was a, an overview about what we did for uh, Schneider from a process perspective. Um, but um, it, it, you know, at the end of the day, what does that really mean for, for our client or for Schneider? In the first 12 months, there are quite a few accomplishments um, kind of circling around uh, in no particular order here. Uh, if you think about there were close to 300 global, global requesters across 70 countries at Schneider Electric with uh, 3,500 requests with over 10,000 assets delivered. So different campaigns that were delivered in market, 70 different countries in the first 12 months. And uh, be, due to this process that we had built that, uh, that enabled uh, Schneider to um, experience extremely low error rate. So uh, we measured it close to, close to 100%. So 99.95% error-free rate uh, with 10,000 assets delivered is quite something. Um, and all along uh, this process, there was also a vendor consolidation. It went from two agencies down to one. And um, as you can read through it, uh, it was quite successful. And that was just in the first 12 months. Uh, right, so um, Kat, I'm just looking for uh, your slides here. Um, I, think, uh, I think you, you, went, uh, you went one one ahead. I went one ahead, I apologize. This is the, <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the dysfunction of a Zoom world when you're trying to combine in-person and virtual, so bear with us. So Kat, which is the first slide? Is this the one that, um, that you're working through or should I go up? Uh, I Apologies, I, I can't see your slides, but is the one entitled "Go to Efficient Ever Free Execution"? Yep, I've got it. Got it on screen. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so, um, so we we change uh, we 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 change the tires, right? While uh, whilst driving, so we'll go tiny bit back now. Um, so just to continue from what Kalia was saying, uh, behind the organizational structure, there needs to be a team that can deliver against the blueprints on time with minimum effort and ever free. And of course, this involves uh, bringing together three key elements, people, process, and technology. Let's talk a bit more about people. We need to ensure that we're providing continuous learnings to our team members. We have clear roles and responsibilities, and we own up and learn from our own mistakes. Then comes the process. So as they say, excellence is a continuous process and not an accident. And we do want and love to excel at the same time. Uh, my team is probably sick and tired of listening to me talking about uh, governance and documentation. And by now I probably sound uh, just like a, a broken record. But hey, it is very true especially when working with global clients or in global organizations, um, you need to, to ensure that all regions or countries are working in the same way, providing the same customer or client journey. Of course, it needs to happen with service level agreements in place. Uh, we need to ensure that we have a clear uh, understanding of what to expect, when to expect it, um, and of course, we can be held accountable towards our own delivery timelines. Quality assurance, uh, another topic close to my heart. So we need to ensure minimum errors. For those of you working closely with production, you know that you know what they say: you're as good as your last error. And um, the the slide that uh, that Fred just showed up on the screen, uh, we were our error free. Uh, rate right now is 99.95 percent just to put it a tiny bit in perspective that means one error every 2000 emails that we sent out so again it's it's you know i'm very proud of it uh it's obviously not perfect it's not 100 percent but i would um i would say uh, quite confidently that uh, that is pretty good um, and anyway, we invest in training uh, in order to make sure that all the errors when they happen are analyzed, understood, and we literally place them in a do not repeat um, file, right? Because again, it needs to be the, the continuous learning behind it. And then of course we have technology. So these are the platforms where the automation comes to life, independent of which marketing automation platform you're using, whether it's LFR, Marketo, Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, HubSpot, Pardot, or any other, it's important to have the right integrations and the right project management tool in place in order to provide a unified customer experience. Now, I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Um, I'm sure you can reach out to me uh, in case you, you have um, more, more questions around this topic or if you're passionate about it as well. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to pass it back to back to Fred um, to, to, to finalize the, the presentation. And thank you all, all for listening. Great. Thank you, Kat. Catalina. Appreciate that. So I, I kind of uh, jumped to the punchline beforehand. So um, we're kind of going to skim through this. 
but as you can see again, um, through Kat and Kalia's uh, work with Schneider, the first 12 months, quite, a, quite, quite impressive results, um, which uh, continue towards that march towards 100% error free. So thank you, Kat, I appreciate that. Um, so we're, we're gonna uh, move on to maybe some questions, uh, Q&A. Before I do though, I uh, just wanted to give kind of a sense of, uh, you know, who is Market One? Um, contextually, we've been around for about 25 years um, and uh, we've got offices in eight countries, uh, about 400 uh, demand generation professionals. Uh, we are exclusively B2B um, and we've got strategic advisory plus global scalable digital production and SDR, tele SDR services. And um, what, this, what the slide and what the, what the uh, presentation doesn't show is our systems integration capabilities. We do a lot of consolidations of automation platforms, migrations, new implementations, and any, any types of technologies that are part of our client's tech stack. We are typically um, technology agnostic uh, as it relates to um, whatever the client has in place. We bring in our, our, our um, enterprise strategist to come in and take a look at the entire, the holistic view of what the, what the client has and what their objectives are. And then we move into a roadmap, which, which entails a lot of what we saw today. Fantastic.